And now it's time for Power of Prophecy with your host, former professor at the University of Texas at Austin, career United States Air Force officer, and best-selling author, Tex Mars. Hello, friends. This is Tex Mars. Welcome to another edition of Power of Prophecy. Well, today we're going to look at a volume of secrets, and uh, we've got some interesting facts for you, my friends. This is secrets. We do this once a month, of course, and it really is, uh, you know, I, I think I love this volume more than just about any other because I'm able to go anywhere I want to go, touch on any issue, no matter how uh, <laughs> depraved or holy and it seems like we have a lot more depraved than holy things in America today, in the world. And I want to talk to you today about Baphomet. That's the most unholy thing I could think about. Baphomet. But I'd like to also talk to you about Caitlin. I guess that's her or his name, Jenner. Caitlin Jenner, the transgender, married to the Kardashian uh, clan or he was, or she was, or whatever. I'm going to call a, a guy because basically that's what he is. He's a man. Uh, and uh, that's what God made him. And I don't care what man makes him or what's in his own mind or what he wants to be. He was born a man and is a man. Now, if he's a wimp and a, a sissy or a female, I don't care. If that's what's in his heart, that's great. That's that's <laughs> that's up to him. But he's a man. Now, what does Caitlyn Jenner have to do with Baphomet? We'll get into that in just a minute. The transgender thing. We're all being shoved into it, hammered into it. And I'm sort of sick and tired of it. I'm getting sort of angry at this stuff. I don't like to turn on my TV and see this trash these filthy, dirty, perverse people. And I don't want to see what they're doing either. I don't want to, I don't want to know about them. Let them do it in the back rooms where Baphomet meets with them. Well, we'll get over, we'll, <laughs> we'll talk about that. We'll also talk about amnesty and President Obama's failure to abide by a district court ruling. He's basically telling the courts to go to hell. He does what he wants. He breaks the law on the immigration thing. He breaks the law on a lot of things. He doesn't mind being a lawbreaker, but if you break the law, why, they're ready to throw the book at you and put you in prison. Hypocrisy. We'll talk about Israel and their new law. They give you 20, year, 20 years in prison for throwing a rock. Now, if you throw a rock in America, nothing happens to you. We've all seen the films in Baltimore when they had the riots there several weeks back. A lot of them were throwing huge rocks at police. Why, the police didn't even fight back. They didn't even arrest the, the rock throwers. But in Israel, if you're a Palestinian and you throw a rock, well, you get 20 years in prison. Israel gives 20 years in prison. Now, I know why they do. The synagogue of Satan. Is that also the temple that God talks about, not the temple of God? Is the synagogue of Satan really the temple of Satan? Hmm. Interesting. And America is being swamped with refugees. Bad enough having immigrants, illegal immigrants illegal aliens, but we've got these refugees as well. So we've got all kinds of things here to talk about. Let's just get on with it. Baphomet. Baphomet is a, really a, a impersonation, you might say, or a, an image of Satan, an image of Satan. In fact, as you know, the church of Satan 
constructed this uh, over 10 foot tall statue of Baphomet. And they recently had a huge party and they unveil their statue in the city of Detroit. It was on television, on all the news channels, and they had a huge crowd of people there for it. The newspapers said nearly a thousand, over seven hundred people showed up. They charged twenty-five to seventy-five dollars just to get in to see this unveiling of the great statue of Satan. Now, this was the Church of Satan that did this. The same church, I suppose, or kin to it, that was founded in 1966 by Anton LaVey, head of the Church of Satan. By the way, I'm not encouraging you to do so, but I understand that the Satanic Bible is still one of the best sellers in America and books, continues to sell in which Anton LaVey uh, recites the the motto or the the chief uh, doctrine (laughs) of the satanic church, which is this, do as thou will shall be the whole of the law. Do as you want. It's your own thing. Do it. Well, uh, do whatever you want. And if anybody tries to stop you, well, Anton LaVey says we don't normally kill people, but in that case, we might just kill. We might just murder somebody and sacrifice them if they try to stop us from doing as we want. That's the philosophy of the satanic church. Now, Caitlyn Jenner, I understand, had a religious ceremony recently. A religious ceremony. You may not think the guy's religious, but evidently some people do. I suspect that Satanists do. He had a, a, a transgender naming ceremony. He called it a religious ceremony. Caitlyn Jenner. A transgender religious naming ceremony to give himself his new name, his female name, Caitlin. There were guests there, and all of them were dressed in white. White, you know, is a sign of purity. So he's basically saying, I'm coming forth as a virgin. Thus, they all dressed in white. He was dressed, or she was, in a white dress. Now, there to provide the music was Boy George, the... Uh, homosexual of, I think he was, uh, his group was called the culture club boy, George really it's sort of girl, George, but anyway, it's sort of boy, girl, George, he was there to provide the music and boy, George was asked, what do you think about the Supreme court ruling on same sex marriage? And he said, it's wonderful. Of course, I, I'm sorry. I can't sound like him. I guess I could try. It's wonderful. Something like that, you know. (laughs) Now, boy, George said that America of today in 2015 is exactly the America that he's been working all of his life for. Yeah, I think many gays think that. Many Satanists think that. So-called progressive liberals believe that. Think about it. He said, when I started out, America was very different. And we have worked very hard to bring America to this place. But we're going to go further, he said. Oh, yes. They're going to go much further, friends. Do you think now they're just going to sit back? The the gays are going to sit back in their homes and cuddle up together and say, we won our victory. We can get married. You, you, my friends, this is the first step. This is, this is, they're going to end with you and I being their service, their slaves. They're going to end up with a satanic America. That was the meaning. That was the meaning of Caitlyn Jenner. That was the meaning of the Supreme Court. 
And what a Supreme Court has three Jews on it. There, there are no, no Christians on it. As far as I know, there's one guy that's a Catholic, Alito, good for him. It doesn't represent America. America's 2% Jewish. There's three out of the nine that are, one third of the Supreme Court is Jewish. Soda Mayer, she's Jewish. And uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, she's Jewish. And who's the other woman on the court? Yeah, uh, Kagan. She's Jewish, of course. Now, uh, of course, we, we shouldn't criticize these lesbian Supreme Court judges Be, because you, you've got people like uh, the head of the whole thing, John Roberts, who's queer as a $3 bill. He's queer. He's queer. He's queer. Everybody's always known that. The Christian leaders knew it, too, when he was appointed by George W. They knew he was a queer. They knew he was homosexual. I want to say that again. The Christian leaders of America knew that he was a homosexual. They did think that he was a little bit conservative, a little bit. But after all, he was the lawyer who volunteered to be the lawyer that that took up the case of the homosexuals who were suing Texas for the right to commit sodomy. And they won in the Supreme Court. He was their lawyer. He didn't even charge them a nickel. Now, if you can get a lawyer with a reputation of John Roberts, now the Supreme Court Chief Justice, if you can get a lawyer to take up your case all the way to the Supreme Court for nothing, for free, let me know. Sometimes we need lawyers here in the power of prophecy. I'd like to get a free lawyer with the stature, supposedly, of John Roberts. Well, actually, I don't need a guy like that stature. But in any case, he took that case free. And all the Christian leaders knew it when he was nominated. When George W. Bush, friends, let me tell you something. George W. Bush himself is a gay man. Oh, no, no. He's got a wife. I know he's got a wife. They call him a beard. The gays call their married partners, they're of the opposite sex, call them beards. But look at her. I, I mean, come on. Mrs. George W. Bush. She's nutty as can be. Pro-abortion. She said the the, the, the very best play she had ever seen was the best little whorehouse in Texas. She was a sick lady. She took up money to collect money for the restoration of the big statue of Buddha in Afghanistan that was blown up by the Taliban. Whatever happened to that money, by the way? Laura Bush, whatever happened to that money? I don't know. Whatever happened to all those hundreds of millions that went to Haiti? They People sent the money through George Bush and Bill Clinton. Remember that? They worked together in Haiti. But the Haitian people now say we, they never saw a plug nickel of it. Did it go into the Clinton Foundation? The crooked, corrupt Clinton Foundation? Is that where all the money for Haiti went? Friends, America gives millions, millions of dollars for these charitable causes and these horrible accidents, these, these tornadoes and hurricanes and uh, floods that occur all over the world. We give millions to the Red Cross. Where does it all go? I think it went into the pockets of Bush and Clinton. The people of Haiti say they never got a penny. Well, I'm starting to get off target here. Let's go back to Caitlyn Jenner. She had this transgender naming ceremony, a religious ceremony. She got serenaded by Boy George. It was all conducted at the... uh, Caitlyn Jenner's Malibu, California home. 
By the way, this this transgender thing, there's way, way less than 1% of, of all the people in the United States are transgender. Probably about 0.2%, two hundredths, the experts say. I'm sure there are many Americans that have never seen a transgender person. Yet we're told now that we've got to accept them in every area of society. And if you don't, you're a bigot. You're a racist. You're a horrible person if you don't accept the transgender. Why? In Los Angeles, they're so popular now, they're wanted for all the TV shows. There's an all-transgender modeling agency they've set up. A modeling agency. Now, what do they need it for? The head of the model agency, modeling agent, was, was, explained it. He said, we need a bunch of transgenders ready. He said, I'm getting all kind of phone calls already from all of the, sp- <laughs> listen to this. All of the sponsors of products want transgenders to do their commercials for them on television. Now, isn't that just plucky? I mean, you're watching TV and a transgender comes on to say, I bank at Bank of America. It's so one. Come on. What's that for? Or some transgender will be in the cooking, uh, the, the kitchen cooking up Pillsbury. The Pillsbury Dobo, Dobo, Dobo will now be a do transgender, I suppose. What's that all about? Is that going to sell products? Transgenders, is that going to help sell Kia automobiles or Chevrolet? Or Ford? No, what they're doing is sticking it in your face. They're taking your face, and in my face, and they're just plunging it down into the toilet. Saying, take a, take a load of this, Christian America. Take a load of this. That's what they're doing. They hate us. They hate Jesus Christ. They can't stand the ground you walk on, my friends. Don't think they're going to be nice to you because you're nice to them. These people are demon-possessed. The transgenders, the gays, and their supporters, they're demon-possessed. They're demons, 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 and demons don't turn out to be nice people. I don't care how much you watch that TV program, Modern People, where they have this gay couple that have adopted a kid or something. That's not real life. In real life, kids get shunted to these gay couples and, and, and get plundered in har- har- horrible treatment. Just, it, it's, it is absolutely disgusting that we're turning our kids over from the orphan homes to the, to the, for, for these monsters to take care of them. I'm not saying that every kid gets sexually molested, but a lot of them do. I'm not saying every kid gets beaten, but they get mentally warped. It's devastating. Imagine. How would you like to be? Think of it, my friends. You're already in bad shape mentally. You're in some orphan home or something happened to your parents. You're all alone. And then these two gay men or gay women come to... Can you imagine two butch women coming saying, we're going to be your new mommies to a little five-year-old girl or seven-year-old girl? Can you imagine It's sickening. We're turning them over to Satan. We're making their lives hell forever. These poor kids. Goodness gracious. Oh, but but we've got to show our love and compassion for the transgenders. They don't show it for you. They want to kill you. They'd like to do something terrible to you. Not all of them, of course, but a great number of them an all-transgender modeling agency. And they say the phones are ringing off the wall. They want the transgenders for movies, for Broadway, for television, for for all of the the shows that you watch. Well, Caitlyn Jenner, she she got an award from ESPN, the sports network. Or he did for bravery, for courage, for coming out. Wouldn't it have been a lot more courageous to to stay a man and act like a man and behave like a man 
and be a credit to God himself? Even if you have these temptations or some compulsion, if you gave your life to Jesus Christ and said, I'm going to not be that way, I'm going to be a man, I'm going to live a clean life, I'm going to tell others, show them a good example, then we could have had Bruce Jenner. But see, he was already with the Kardashians. He was already in that sloppy, filthy, dirty hole. He's been dirty and filthy for many, many years. He's been had demons in his heart for many years. They've even got him on a reality TV show. And it's sickening. I... I, I I try to avoid the guy on TV, but one time I, I, he was receiving an award or something, and I switched that channel, and I heard him for about 10 seconds, his voice. His voice, 10 seconds. It was like a demon coming out of the man, or uh, her, or whatever. And I turned off the channel quickly. I don't want demons talking to me through my television. Well, I'll tell you some other demons, my friend. There's a, there's a demon named Cecile Richards, who's the president of Planned Parenthood. Now, I know Cecile Richards. She's a, a filthy person who has led this Planned Parenthood, this billion-dollar organization, which receives $500 million of our taxpayer dollars. They're being paid that by Republicans. Republicans who run the Senate and the House every year vote money for them. $500 million. And they use it for abortion. We, 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 know we use it for other things, not abortion. Come on, my friends. You give $500 million to them, that allows them to use their money for other things, sure. It allows them to, to, to use their money for abortions. <laughs> it doesn't. If you, if you give somebody $500 million and they already have $500 million, what, what, what do you care what they use it for? They claim they don't use the government money for it. What do they do with it? Come on, folks. This is a guy. This is a ruse. They're using $500 million, and then they're taking these poor babies that they're aborting. They're the, the, the world's number one abortion clinic. And they're taking these poor babies, mostly black, from poor black neighborhoods. They're aborting these babies, and they're selling the body parts, selling them. Now, we as Christians, many in the rescue industry, have known about this for years and years. We've known what they did. But Cecile Richards, the president of Planned Parenthood, says, no, 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 we're not breaking the law. We're not doing that. Well, the, the Center for Medical Progress, this pro-life group, has 18 different videos of the top medical doctors and experts of Planned Parenthood showing them, bragging about it even negotiating the prices. One of them have even said, I want to you know, sell enough body parts so I can get me a Lamborghini. A uh, Lamborghini is a pretty expensive automobile, my friends. I don't know how much money you have, but I think I could take all the money I've got and all the money you got, we couldn't buy one. Now, th th this is what these people do. They're murderers. It's human sacrifice. Now, let's get back to Baphomet and the Church of Satan. Now, Baphomet is a demon god. He's a representation of Satan. He's half man, half woman. There you have the Caitlyn Jenner connection. He's half man, half woman. Now, he has an object coming out of his genital area. He's half goat, half man. Half male, half female. Where did Baphomet come from? He came from the Knights Templar, from the ancient Masonic group. He's a Freemason god, too. Now, back hundreds of years ago, they worshipped Baphomet in the Masonic temples in Europe. Now, the head of the Knights Templar was a man named Jacques de Molay. And Jacques de Molay worshipped this demon beast as Satan. And thousands of Masons around the world worshipped this Baphomet, this idol. Then Jacques de Molay 
was arrested and he was burned at the stake for his blasphemy. And that made the Masons and the Knights Templar good and hot. They were angry. How dare the Pope of Rome and King Philip of France, how dare them arrest our Grand Master, Jacques de Molay? How dare them put him to the stake and burn him to death and other Knights Templars as well? We will get revenge. Now, friends, in one of the rituals for the in the 33 degrees of Freemasonry, they have a, a ritual in which the ceremony shows them getting revenge. Murder is the way they get their revenge. Now, or simulated murder, I should say. Now, Jacques de Molay is, is literally almost literally worshipped by Masons today. Did you know that Billy Graham wrote an endorsement for the Young People's Group of the Demolays? They're called the Demolays. They're, they're a Masonic organization. If you're a young man, you want to be a Mason, you want to learn all about it, well, you start out as a Demolay. That's what they call you. They name you after Jacques de Molay, who was not only a homosexual, but a worshiper of Satan in the form of Baphomet. And he was led to the stake and burned alive. This is the, this is the exemplar they want for their youth in masonry. And guess what? Bill Clinton was a de Molay. In fact, as an adult, he received the international award the annual International War of the D. Malays. They have a big annual convention every year. Governor of the state of Arkansas, Bill Clinton, went there and received it. And as I've told you, Billy Graham wrote a, a glowing endorsement of the D. Malay organization and said it was a wonderful organization for youth. Baphomet, D. Malay, there's the connection. Today's Freemasons still honor Jacques de Molay, who's connected to Baphomet. Now, the, 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 the Satanists know what they're doing when they honor Baphomet. Half man, half woman, transgender. There's the Satanic connection. So they've got this statue, the Church of Satan has got this great statue of Baphomet. Now, why do they choose Detroit to have their first big public ceremony? Detroit is an unholy, satanic city. Did you know that the mayor, the black mayor of Detroit, is in prison now? He was mayor. He was found having an affair with his associate, some some woman assistant, and, and, and taking money. I, I don't know what all he did. But he got convicted for it. He's in prison now. That, that's the kind of city Detroit is, this black city. I mean, all of those cities, Cleveland, Detroit, Chicago, especially the ones that are run by blacks, are just hell holes. They're hell holes. And now they have Baphomet there. Now, all the people were out there and bragging about Baphomet and waiting, and one guy had horns coming out of his head. He had them sewn on or put there permanently look like to me and all the women were wearing black and they all you know they love to make fun and one woman was saying you Christians just don't understand yeah I understand you're worshiping Satan oh well we really don't believe in Satan ha 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 yeah I know it's Baphomet isn't it I forgot Satan has many names Satan has many names you know him as Baphomet. Okay, we're going to take a little break here. When we come back, we're going to have many more secrets right here on Power of Prophecy. I'm Tex Mars. Hello, friends. This is Tex Mars. You know, it's great to be with you, and I, I just want to thank you for your love gifts and tithing to this ministry, Power of Prophecy. 
Did you know that we're coming up on 30 years? 30 years. Now we're a few months from that, but I, I just was, I was thinking about it the other day. And I told my wife one, I said, 30 years of power of prophecy. Actually, we were, we were called Living Truth Ministries before. And we changed our name to emphasize the prophetic nature of Jesus Christ. 30 years. We've been in the same building here for many years. And the whole neighborhood has grown up around us. Austin's really booming. And uh, we, we see these beautiful houses growing up around us. And we're at the end of the street. We look like a house. We always look like a house. But we've got a fence all the way around us, a, a nice wrought iron fence. And it's lovely out here. We used to see a lot of deer. We once even saw a mountain lion out here. It was an amazing thing. We've seen some coyotes, a lot of foxes and so forth. Of course, our cat gets out and finds raccoons and gets in a lot of trouble and things like that. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> well, that's right. We have a ministry cat. We used to have two of them, but one, you know, got a little old and went on to be with the Lord. You say, what? He went on to be with the Lord? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the, everybody here loved that cat and prayed for the cat. And we all are going to die someday and, you know, dust to dust. And we prayed that the cat would go to heaven. Well, you know, I think God answers prayers. A lot of people think that's silly. Well, I don't. <laughs> I still remember the, the, the former that came to visit us from Iowa. A lot of farmers from the state of Iowa said he was a hog farmer, had a lot of hogs. He visited the ministry here. I was really glad to see him. We were chatting. He said, you know, I pray for my animals. He said, I had a, 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 a small, you know, pig, I guess a hog. <laughs> I, I, excuse me, folks. I don't even know the difference between a pig and a hog. Maybe some of you farmers will, will or farm types will write to me and tell me. <laughs> Isn't a pig a little hog? I think something like that. Isn't it? Okay. <laughs> I'm a dumb person on forums, but in any case, I'm a small town boy, really small town, but I left at age 18. And since then, I guess I've lived in cities. I'm really a small town boy. But in any case, he said, when one of my animals gets sick, is it's for example, this little pig, he got sick. And they said, you know, you just have to let him go. He's, 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 he's dying. And I said, he's not going to die. And I, 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 I put my arms around him. I lifted him up to Jesus and said, Lord Jesus, please give this pig more years of life. Please, Lord. And you know what? Immediately that sick, that, that pig started getting well. Within a few days, he was up and running around. That <laughs> I didn't doubt that fellow one moment. I, <laughs> I believe him. He had faith. Now, some people say, no, God doesn't care about pigs. He, he doesn't care about animals. Didn't care about that cat. You just don't know. <laughs> Did you know that the Bible says that, it says, let everything that live have breath and praise the Lord. Everything that has a breath will praise the Lord. I don't know how that works. I don't know how a cat or a dog will praise the Lord. It's just that God is so great that everything will praise him. I don't, I don't know whether it reconstructs things. He can do anything he wants. He can re reconstruct everything. He's going to reconstruct your body. Don't think you're going to die. You're, you're going to go into another existence, hopefully to heavenly Jerusalem, to heaven if you're a Christian. If not, well, there's another place called hell. I'm just telling you this to show you how great God is. Because some people say God doesn't care about that. God doesn't care about me. You know, did you know that there's some people that actually curse God? Yeah. I was talking to a woman recently. She said, I've been mad at God a lot of times. I said, what were you mad at God for? Well, because my, you know, son did this and my daughter did this and, you know, and blah, 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 blah. And I, you know, and we, we've had problems in our life. My husband and I, blah, blah, blah. Here she was. She and her husband driving around in a big new car. They live in a, in a, 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 a home worth about a million and a half dollars here in Austin, Texas. Three beautiful kids, all grown, all married. And she's saying, 
I cursed God. I just, you know, I just get mad at him. Well, well, let me tell you, my friends, that's your big mistake. Don't ever curse God and don't ever get angry at God. God is good. God loves you. Let me tell you something. He's our heavenly father. Even my earthly father, I never cursed him. And I, I really, I can't ever remember even getting mad at my dad. Now, a couple of times when I was a little kid, I wanted to try to escape somewhere. <laughs> I deserved a whipping. And <laughs> I thought, he, oh, when he comes home, he's going to whip me. He usually didn't, though. You know, <laughs> the, 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 the fear of it is, is worse than the actual event, right? He never, never really whipped me that much. It was, it was over and out, you know, just quick, quick, quick. <laughs> but I never even thought about cursing or being angry at him. In fact, even when I got a whipping, I, I knew I deserved it. When I was a little bitty kid, I knew I deserved it. Just didn't want it. Didn't like it. <laughs> Naturally. Well, I just want to talk to you about that, you know, and tell you God is great. God is love. In fact, the Bible says God is love. Just those three words. God is love. Now, if the devil's doing things, is, is making your life hard for you, I can understand you being angry at him. I'm angry at him all the time. If wicked people are causing you problems in your life, it's okay to be angry at them. I don't think you ought to try to repay them the same way. I think you ought to pray for them. You ought to be good to them. Did you know that in Psalms, we find that God is angry? angry with the wicked every day. Did you know that, friends? He doesn't miss a day when he's not angry at the wicked. You know, you and I don't really need to be that angry with the wicked. Now, I know today's program, I'm sort of upset at these transgenders and all these that are ruining our society and they're, they're, they're destroying the, the, the lives of, of little kids and adults. And that makes me very angry, very mad. But I really shouldn't be. I should just let God handle it. God gets angry too. People say, oh, God doesn't get angry. He's greater than that. He's, yeah, he does. He does. It says in, in the Psalms, God is angry at the wicked every day. Every day when they get out of bed, th th they should know that God is angry at them. You church of Satan people, God is angry at you. Oh, God didn't even think about me. I'm, I'm just one of hundreds of thousands in the church of Satan. I don't even believe in God. Well, you don't have to believe in God, but God knows you. God's tracked you from the very beginning. He knows everything you've done. He knows you were at that church of Satan unveiling of their statue Baphomet. He knows about you. And he's angry at you over it. Very angry. Every day. You can't escape God. Every day he's angry. But let me tell you something else. It also says in some that those who are chosen by God, chosen by God, who believe in him, have faith in him, God has, he's called them out. He's separated them from, let's just say, the herd. <laughs> You're separated out. You're special. You're chosen. He takes you out from all the others, and he keeps you, and he protects you. You, you know, it, it's just like a Wanda used to, she was going to collect dolls for a while. She's got quite a few dolls, D-O-L-L-S. And if she had a doll that, you know, was worth maybe a hundred dollars or something, it, it went up, was, they were going up in price. She, wow. That was a precious little doll for her. She'd keep it separate and, you know, and protect it. That was pretty smart. You ever do that? Maybe, maybe you have a, a, a new car or something. You're going to really protect it, take care of it. Of course, once it's got a few dings on it, you just let it go. I realize that, <laughs> but in any case, you protect it. Did you know that God is the greatest collector in the world? God collects human beings. He, he looks out over all of them, and he said, I'm going to choose that one. I'm going to choose that one. I'm going to choose that one. And he keeps them all separate. And when someone tries to hurt them, oh, it makes him angry. It makes him very angry. How about you? Have you ever collected something? Maybe you like dogs. Maybe you got a couple of dogs, a couple of cats. I don't know what. Maybe you have favorite dresses or something. You want to keep them nice. Maybe your your kids are your your gifts. A lot of say people say this is my treasure, my kids. I understand that. God 
takes you apart from the rest. He collects you and he keeps you and he watches over you. Satan cannot get to you. you this, this church of Satan, they have nothing to do with you and me. You need to be aware of them. You need to be aware of the devices of the devil. The, the Bible tells us to be aware, to be under, understanding of what the devil is doing in the world. But don't be any part of it. Stay away from it. God's angry at them. Very angry. You don't need to be angry at God. You should be thankful to God. If bad things happen in your life, we'll say, Lord, they just happen. That's the way it is. But I know everything will turn out for good. I know everything will work out. I know that you're God. You'll be so much happier. By the way, I want to tell you our address here at Power of Prophecy. I'd like to know what you think about that. Do you think God is angry or, or is that just some old saying in the Old Testament? What do you think? Is he angry at the wicked? Not at you, but at the wicked. Does he take care of those who, whom he's chosen? Does he separate them from the others? Watch over them, protect them, hone them, polish them. Hmm. Let me know what you think. We're here at 1708 Patterson Road, Austin, Texas, 78733. You can write to Tex Mars, 1708 Patterson Road, Austin, Texas, 78733. I'd love to hear from you. Let me know what you think about God. Would you? Tell me what you think about God. Do you think he takes care of you every day? Does he love you every day? I suspect he does. I, 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 I'm sure of it. Let's still return to our regular program, looking at the volume of secrets. Well, illegals are ravaging Texas, I understand. They're all over the United States, illegal aliens. Texas, since Obama has been elected, they say that there's over 600,000 crimes committed by illegal aliens. And there are 3,000 murders that have been committed. Mm. Well, the president is planning more amnesty. They say that he, he before he leaves office, he wants to give 9.6 million more amnesty. Wow. Now, here's something for you. Think about this. You know, there's a citizenship of every illegal alien. When he becomes a citizen, he or she becomes a citizen of the United States, they raise their right hand, or I guess, well, it could be they raise their left hand, they're left-handed. <laughs> But raise your hand and take an oath. And one of the things you do is say that you will defend the Constitution of the United States. You will defend the Constitution of the United States. Now, I took that oath as an officer in the Air Force. I remember taking it, I believe, as an enlisted person in the Air Force. You will defend the United States Constitution. That's not too tough, is it, to say I will defend? Well, Obama says that's too much to ask. He has stripped the requirement from the citizenship oath to defend the United States Constitution. Aliens no longer have to say they'll defend the United States Constitution when they become a citizen. Isn't that shocking? <sighs> Meanwhile, he's threatened Congress. You see, some people have suggested we get rid of these sanctuary cities. Now, what is a sanctuary city? It's a city where the leaders of the city say, we will not obey the federal government. We will not turn over illegal aliens to the immigration service. And even if the illegal alien is a, is a, a known offender, if they're a, a convicted felon, they won't do anything about it. Just let them walk the streets. That's what happened, you know, in San Francisco when poor girl was killed recently by an illegal alien who had been deported, what, six or seven times? He had been deported six or seven times, but he kept coming back. Nothing was made. To, there was no attempt made to stop the guy from coming back. And the police let him go. They didn't, they didn't want him. They let him walk the city. And while walking the city, he got a gun and went and shot a beautiful young lady walking with her dad enjoying the beautiful city. She ended up dead, shot in the head by an illegal alien who didn't even know her. 
because San Francisco is a sanctuary city. Now, now the, the mayor and the city council there don't care about that. She's just a victim. Do you care, friends? Now, they say there's over 200 cities across the United States that have claimed that they're sanctuary cities. They're defying the federal law. They will not arrest and take illegal aliens to, to jail. They will not turn them over to the Immigration Service. And some have demanded that Congress put a stop to these sanctuary cities by passing a law. But Obama says, I'll veto that law. He likes the way it is. He likes the sanctuary cities. He likes illegal aliens. He likes these criminal, these criminals. And there are now hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of them, walking the streets ready to kill, ready to rape, ready, ready to rob you and me. Now, somebody says, well, it doesn't matter whether I'm, if I'm going to get raped or robbed, it doesn't matter to me whether I'm raped or robbed by a, a, a citizen or an illegal alien. No, you, you don't get the point. If the illegal alien is not in the United States, you don't have to worry about being robbed by them. They'll cut down the people that are going to rob you by a whole bunch. It means it makes it very a lot less likely that you'll be raped or robbed or killed. Obama doesn't care about you as a citizen. And, and you know, I, I've had people, many write to me, engineers, scientists, carpenters, plumbers. They write to me and say they can't get a job now. Illegal aliens have come in and taken all the jobs. What am I going to do? I got a family to feed. Help me. I can't help them. I can pray for them. I guess that's a great help, but nobody cares about these people. Why, wow, they're just citizens. And Obama and his people in our Congress, our Republicans and Democrats, don't want you as citizens anymore. If you learned about George Washington and Thomas Jefferson in school, they don't, they don't care about that. They don't, they don't admire that. They don't want you. That's old fashioned stuff. In fact, recently somebody said we need to change the name of Washington DC. Because you see, Washington was, was president during a, a time of slaves. That's the way the world was back then. Until 1865, when the slaves were all freed. They say that the name Washington is a disgrace. He and Jefferson Adams, all of them had slaves, and and they're terrible people. We don't want them anymore. We don't want those names. We don't want the statues in Washington, D.C. We don't want books about them. And someone has suggested, let's change the name of Washington, D.C. to Black City. Black City. Why black? Because there's so many blacks live there. There are more blacks than any other race living in Washington, D.C. Why? Because they get so many welfare benefits. So they move there. And it's become a drug city. Of course, many of the white legislators, the senators and congressmen, get all their drugs from the black drug dealers. But that's another story. They want to change the name of Washington, D.C., to Black City. Boy. Mm. Unbelievable. Now, I want to, I want to tell you, I, I did a program. It's, on, it's available on audio tape and CD. And it's entitled, We Are Being Colonized. I did this a couple of years ago, and I explained about America's refugee program. Refugee program. There are illegal immigrants coming to America, millions of them. But the real problem is the refugees. Now, you may not believe this, but it was decided back in the days of George Bush that we were not having enough illegal aliens come over. I know the border is like a sieve, and they just pour over like water across the border, all these from Mexico and El Salvador and Guatemala and so forth. Of course, we're having a whole lot of them come in by air. And once they're in, they stay in. They come over to go to college, to work or whatever, from China, from Pakistan, from Indonesia. They, they're staying too. We have hundreds of thousands of red Chinese. And it's only starting. Listen, listen, over the next 25 years, America will no longer be America. And it's been planned. Now, Bush started this. 
they decided that what they would do was, in addition to these illegal aliens, they would have refugees. You see, the refugee law is different than the immigration law. If a person come to the United States and say, I am a refugee, then they don't have to apply for immigration status. They're automatically given their green card. Now, here's the way it works. If a person is under threat from his own government or from someone in his country, if he feels under threat to his life or his family's life, in some way, if he's under threat of his life, he may be a refugee, and if so, he can seek refugee status in the United States. Now, what this means is there are hundreds of thousands, millions, we don't know how many millions, it may be more than all the illegal aliens combined that are overseas in countries like Somalia, Kenya, the Congo, all over Africa, millions of Africans have been coming to the United States as refugees. Now, you may be walking around the streets of downtown Miami or New York or Cleveland, and you see black people, and you say hello, you, know, you want to chat with them, and they have strange accents. They talk funny. If you question them closely, you find out they're not, they're not Native Americans. They're not blacks born in the United States. They're not citizens. They don't know anything about our schools, about our founding fathers, anything. Oh, I come from Somalia. I come from Madagascar. I come from South Africa. That's what they will tell you. Now, here's how they get here. The U.S. government has decided that they want refugees. We want to have refugees come. And there are no numerical limits on how many refugees can come. So we have gone out and we have sent, we have hired these agencies, these non-governmental organizations, NGOs. And there are hundreds, hundreds of these organizations been set up by mostly liberal groups. They've been set up to go overseas and find refugees. They will go to the Congo in Africa. And they'll go to a village and say, how would everybody in this village like to come to America? Well, the people are thrilled. Okay, sign here. And then they, the, the, the organization fills out an application, and it says all of these people are threatened. How are they threatened? Well, they're threatened through hunger, or they're threatened through thirst, or disease. They're just threatened. Or maybe their own government has been bad to them, or threatens to be bad to them. They're all refugees. And then they're approved by the U.S. government, which pays for their transportation to the United States. Now, I know you're going to think, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding about this, don't you? I'm telling you the truth, friends. So, for example, they'll go out, these non-governmental organizations in Somalia, and they'll sign up about 10,000 Somalians to come to the United States as refugees. And the United States will charter aircraft. Charter aircraft. And we'll bring in 20 or 30 airplanes or more airplanes and pick all of these Somalians up and bring them to the United States. Now, to prepare for their coming, the United States will build little cities, little towns. Or in the suburbs, they will start building a huge apartment complex, condo complex. Now, I, I've been talking to people, and they, they're driving in... Minnesota, outside of Minneapolis, or in Idaho, or Mississippi, or Virginia. And suddenly, way out in the boondocks, they'll see a city coming up. I mean, it's, it's amazing. They see hundreds and hundreds of, of little homes coming up. They'll say, what's going on out here? What, what, what's, what's happening? It's a refugee city. One man told me he's a traveling salesman and he saw one of these cities going up in Idaho and he drove into the, off the highway and went into the little town. He said, Tex, there are six to 800 little bitty houses all looking just alike. And they've got food stores and all kinds of stuff. They got high schools and elementary schools. 
and all of the people looked the same. And I stopped and said, where are you people from? They're all from Kenya. They said, we've come to America. We were refugees. And I said, well, how many people are here? And they said, well, there's, there's you know, like a thousand or so. Well, wh where do you work? Well, we're paid by the government. We get monthly payments. And they were getting around three or $4,000 each family per month just to be there. Refugees. Of course, they could leave their, their settlements and go into the main cities, and then they're, then they're doing that. And people are being frightened. These little towns suddenly have another little town right next to them. Across America, they're building refugee towns. You won't believe it. And they say that some schools have more refugees than have citizens. And the refugees don't get along with the illegal aliens. They fight each other and they're gangs and all that kind of stuff. But think of all these thousands of refugees. They say that some, that they have little cities of Somalians. There's 10 or 15,000 at a time. Ethiopians. Syrians are the new ones. They're from Syria. There's tens of thousands of Syrians coming throughout the, the South to live. And the government gives them all money, pays for all their medical needs. It's incredible. Refugees. If you complain about illegal immigration, you don't know about the refugees. They, they, don't, they don't count. They're different. Now, I was talking with a man who is very knowledgeable on immigration. He said, Tex, we have in America today around 20 million illegal immigrants. The government says 11 million. They've been claiming 11 million for the last 15 or 20 years, as if we never got any new ones in. It's not growing. But we have at least 20 million illegal aliens. But he said, we have at least 40 to 50 million refugees. I said, well, how, why are they refugees? He said, well, they just label them that. If their country is poor, they can be a refugee. That's it. That's the only criteria in their poor country. So they qualify as a refugee. That way they don't have to meet immigration quotas. And that way we can go there to their country, bring them back in our aircraft, build them homes, give them jobs, whatever, give them money every month unbelievable. I said, you're telling me there's tens of millions of so-called refugees and they're, they're, they're everywhere throughout America. He said, that's right. My friends, this is the end of America and your Republicans know about it. They're funding it all. They're funding it in Congress, the Republicans and the Democrats. Of course they know it and they know all of these people will be encouraged to vote encouraged to vote. What will they all vote? Naturally, for all their benefits, for the Democrats. There, there's no such thing as separate political parties anymore. There's only Republicans and Democrats. There's the Republicrats, the War Party, the Refugee Party, the Illegal Immigrant Party. And you and I as citizens, we're old, fuddy-duddy, good for nothing We're on the way out, but not with God. He's collecting us. You see, <laughs> you're special to God and he is angry with the wicked every day. I'm Tex Mars. You've been listening to a volume of secrets. My prayer is that you'll tune in each week during the same time and discover the power of prophecy. 